That's right. 25. Oh, we're on 25 now. Bah, 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 bah. That's my air horn. That's my air horn. Yeah. Welcome to the Tim and Lenny podcast. Lenny and Tim <laughs> podcast, whatever we're going to call it. I did Tin the, and Lemmy. Tin and Lemmy. Oh, Whatever. no. We're going through the book of... The screw tape Letters. <laughs> I just said the book of... I don't know why I said... I think that's funny. It's like we're going through a book of like the Bible, but that's it's That's why not. I had to jump in with screw tape Letters, because yeah. I, I know you almost said First Corinthians. I probably almost did. Yeah. It's just my head is just spinning. But welcome. So glad you guys are joining us and riding along this ride as we read through the book... Oh, my gosh. You did it again. The book of... Screw tape letters. <laughs> <laughs> it is a allegory. It's just a story. It's super fun. And as we read through it, we are pulling out just ideas in our own lives and fun things. So if you're following along, we're actually on chapter 25, where there is a chief demon or like a captain demon. He probably oversees a bunch of them. But this one in particular is written to a character called Screw Tape. And Screw Tape has a particular no, written from Screw Tape. Oh, you're right. Sorry. To from Screw Tape to Wormwood. Wormwood. There you go. Ching. I'm with you. It's and, only 25 uh, Wormwood chapters. Wormwood has a yeah, exactly. I should have figured it out by now. Wormwood has a patient um, that he's going after to try and manipulate and pull away from God and trying to first steer him away from God, but now he's like in his relationship with God. And now they're doing everything they can to diminish. The, just make him the ineffective. Blessing, yeah. and just make him ineffective in his relationship with God and with other people, really, yep. is what they want to do. And so they want to destroy his life. And that's the perspective that we get to see here. So here we go. Chapter 25, starting in verse 1. <laughs> Take it away. I verse did, 1. I did do that on purpose. I did do okay. that on purpose. I did do that. I don't have a little one. There's next no to mine. verses. All right. So, my dear Wormwood, the real trouble about the set your patient is living in is that it is merely Christian. So if you remember last week, we talked about this kind of group that he's been included in because of his girlfriend or wife that he's now connected with and how they're pretty solid Christians and they're good in that like even the chink in her little bit of armor, they really can't do much good with her, but they can use it to leverage and manipulate him to move him away from God. Right? Okay. So what a plug. What a plug. For his own book. For his own book. Yeah. <laughs> know, mere right? Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, when I read that, I thought, ah, that's goofy. Um, they all have individual interests, of course, but the bond remains mere Christianity. <laughs> Do you yep. think he was right? I wonder book? if he wrote, now I'd have to go look at, We're like, gonna look at the it. chronology yeah. of his, we'll find out by the his next writings. Time. He goes on, we, what we want, if men become Christians at all, is to keep them in the state of mind I call Christianity and you know, Christianity and the crisis, Christianity and the new psychology, Christianity and the new order, Christianity and faith and healing, Christianity and psycho research, Christianity and vegetarianism or veganism. Christi- he didn't say that. I added veganism. Christianity and spelling reform. What is spelling reform? <laughs> that is so funny. So like Christianity and politics, Christianity and Trump, Christianity and Biden, Christianity and dot, 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 dot. Yep, Christianity okay, and. Keep going on, right? Yep. If Music they, or, yeah. Yep. If they must be Christians... Let them at least be Christians with a difference. Interesting. Ah, I'm getting excited. I'm excited, yeah. All right. Substitute for the faith itself some fashion with a Christian coloring. Work on their honor of the same old thing. And it's like, for some reason... Their horror of the same old thing. I would say work on... Work on their horror of the... That's why it's capital, same old thing, right? So work Mm. on their horror of the same old thing. Basically, he wants to pull them away from the basic principles of... Christian practices and do an and. And like, right. instead of just relying on repentance and running to Jesus and grace, and that's it. I, yeah. It's that dot, 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 and. I find it interesting that, you know, at the beginning he says, because uh, he's talking about the group that the patient that is kind of living with are merely Christian. They all have individual interests, of course, but their bond remains mere Christianity. Like, and that's their what he only wants to keep bond, it simple. Is that they're Christians? It's yes. not that they're Christians and with and right. It's not that they're they're bonded together as Christians and you social know, justice X Y Z right, exactly, right, right, right. which yeah, we yeah. are so constantly drawn yep, toward. Yep, yep, yep. And I love that idea of that diversity yeah. and the strength of like what can bond us together doesn't have to be 
and it yeah. can just be the gospel. The gospel. Yeah. And it's interesting when we started off a couple of years ago in ministry um, here. Our theme, thank you to you, and it still is one of our tenets here: is keep it simple, keep a gospel. Yeah. And that's basically what we're getting at. Is that's a soup. That's the healthiest environment for the birthing of healthy Christians: is keeping it simple, keep a gospel. Whereas if it becomes Christianity and, and, and then here yep. he says, substitute for the faith itself, some fashion with a Christian coloring. And he says here, that statement work on their horror of quote, the same old thing. Now he's going to describe it here. This next uh, uh, paragraph here says the horror of the same old thing is one of the most valuable passions we have produced in the human heart. An endless source of heresies in religion, folly in counsel, infidelity, infidelity in marriage, and inconsistency in friendship. The humans live in time and experience reality, uh, reality. experience reality successively. Oh, remember that one we talked about? Time. Oh man, timey wimey. To experience much of it, therefore, they must experience many different things. In other words. They must experience change. And the only constant is change. To be alive. If you're alive, you're changing. That's it. (laughs) And since they need change, the enemy, being God, being a hedonist at heart, has made change pleasurable to them for some people. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just as he had made eating pleasurable. It's interesting. But since he does not wish them to take change any more than eating in end in itself, he has balanced the love of change in them by love of permeance. Permanence. Yeah. So it's a both and happening. Here's a paradox that they're going to explore here. So yeah. he has contrived to gratify both tastes together in the very world he has made. By the union, by that union of change and pre- permanence, which we call rhythm, which we oh, talked I about. I love that. <laughs> yeah. He gives them the seasons, each season different, yet every year the same. So that spring is always felt as a novelty, yet always as the reoccurrence of an imm- immemorial theme. He gives them in his church a spiritual year. They change from fast to feast. But it is the same feast as before. And so it's interesting in my own life. I finally am at a place where I can see my life. I'm detached enough where I look at my life through seasons. Mm-hmm. And I have gone through a couple of years of a season of pruning. And now I moved into a season where I call dormancy. Mm-hmm. And then you move from a season of dormancy to a season of fruitfulness. And then you move from a season of fruitfulness back to a season of pruning. And so often we go through a season of pruning, like which is we can deal with a lot of confession, a lot of sin, a lot of things that just aren't successful in our lives. Whatever it's going to be, it feels like that way. But it's really to produce more fruit in the long run. We've got to be trimmed back. Mm-hmm. And we've got to be cut back. And things in our lives get cut back. And that, that rhythm that God has created in our lives is there for a reason. And it's both that, and they're explaining a spiritual ideal negatively, but in the positive, it's it's, it's to set this idea, because we live in time, to be able to recognize the working that God is doing, both in the change, but then also in the permanence, but yet in the rhythm, we find both. Yes. And those, I mean, I love the, uh, the explanation he uses of like seasons and... Yeah. Um, you know, even that there's a spiritual calendar and, yep. and you have feasts and you have fasts and yep. like these rhythms, like they ground us in permanence, yeah. but they allow us to experience change yeah. year by no, year. It's powerful. And, uh, um, rhythms has been like trying to live my life in rhythms yeah. has been one of those, those things I try to create rhythms to my day. Mm -hmm. I try to create rhythms to my week. Mm -hmm. I try to create rhythms to my month Mm -hmm. or to a, to, to chunks of the year. Uh, so right now I'm in summer and my summer rhythm is put the brakes on everything. (laughs) Right. Just R and R, you know, and, uh, and to soak in time with my family and to just like to be productive, mm-hmm. like I have a list of things that I've written on my mirror yeah. that's like, I just, I want to cross out those things and take care of these things. Uh, but I also have days where I don't do anything. Yeah. And like, I just, and I have to remind myself of this season where I'm, where I'm resting and not some, some days like not doing anything on the, on the days when I'm at work mm. and I'm bombarded by a million things and I'm so overwhelmed and I'm so, and I, and I tell myself, okay, in the summer, when I sleep, well, now there's no sleeping in because baby, but, yeah. uh, you know, when I'm still in my pajamas at 2.30 p.m., 
Because all, all I've done is watch Yo Gabba Gabba with my daughter, you know, and drink coffee and like drink co- and yeah. like I've just I've taken the whole morning to just play yeah. and sit and be. Yeah. I'm not going to allow myself to feel guilty because yeah, this no. is part of the rhythm. And I, I think know. that yeah, our our good. busyness and and just the culture that we live in that's like so. Uh, pro, um, Process driven, process driven, and producing, producing and just like having like a finished product or like being able to look back to like what what we've done or what like is is it's good, but it's also so destructive. Well, I recognize they're going to use an example here, and this is one that I identify with. He says, "Now, just as we pick out and exaggerate the pleasure of eating to produce gluttony, so God designed eating Mm -hmm. to enjoy, but we then take that and twist it and indulge too much and then become gluttonous with it." And it was Um, fun that when we when we learned kind of we read through the gluttony not being overeating. Well, that's part of it too. Part of it, it yeah. But in this one was just the uh, the delicacy of it. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so we pick out, and it goes on, and we keep reading. So we pick out this natural pleasantness of change and twist it into a demand for absolute novelty. This demand is entirely our workmanship. Oh, interesting. So they're talking about how they've now created a new narrative and culture, it sounds like, that they have twisted what God originally intended, mm-hmm. and they've just decided to uh, hijack it. Okay, to so, hijack the pleasantness of change. Right. So mm-hmm. it goes on. If we neglect our duty, men will be not only connected with, tra- uh, but transported by the mixed novelty and familiarity of snowdrops this January, sunrise this morning, plum pudding this Christmas. Children, until we have taught them better, will be perfectly happy with a seasonal round of games in which conquerors succeed hopscotch as regularly as autumn follows summer. I love that wording. Only by our incessant efforts is the demand for infinite or unrhythmic change kept up. So they're wanting to keep us so busy we don't get to experience the pleasures, which is what you're like, summers? And you've chosen to allow your summers to be one, not of production or producing, but yeah. of relaxation, of enjoying, of really resting in the creation. God is trusting that, hey, I'm going to go to work when I need to. I wonder and I don't how, need to right now. I wonder how, or if he's going to get into, because I haven't read ahead, uh, but like when we're in a season, it seems like we're, we desire the other season. You know, it's, you say that. So I used to be that way. When I knew I, because so the the practices of of being aware of my seasons, um, like spiritually, spiritually, I'm talking about, which also deals with some of the physical stuff. I'm talking about like physically, like in the summer, I'm like, oh, I want to go snowboarding, and then in the winter, I'm like, I wish I want to be at the lake or the beach or whatever. Like, there's, it's never good enough. Yeah, and that's where I wanted to get. um, That was you're uh, dealing with something. So for years it was that like, oh man, I'm going to, I wish I wasn't in the pruning I want to be mm. fruitful. And it's for me, it's because I'm my, one of my identities being fruitful, productive, productive, productive. So I always want to only live in the season of having produce, which mm-hmm. is just not healthy. And it was only a couple of years ago that I finally relinquished having to either want to control or not be content with exactly where God has me. And this last couple of years, especially this last year in the season I'm in and where I'm at in my life and things that are going on, it's like, no, no, no. Like, I'm embracing it and wholly just enjoying exactly where I am mm. and just trusting in that process. And it was so freeing, so freeing. And for years, my whole life was like, no, nah, I'm going to get through this season to get to the next. And in many ways, I would then hurry, try to hurry the process up, take control of the reins. Yep. And it really was just not allowing good fruit or the pain of the, 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 the pruning was too much. And I'm like, no, we're done. I'm going to move on to this next thing and pretend. But the reality is God had too much work to do in my life. Mm. And so this last year, especially two years, but it's just, so like, God, I really enjoyed that. So it's cool that you said that perspective. And that's really what you're saying. Like, and I love the way you said it. It's like, I don't need to feel guilty right now. It's two o'clock and I'm going to brace every minute with this time with my daughter yeah. and, and I, that kind of stuff. It's amazing. So let's see what he says. This dem- you're going to keep reading here, right? Yeah. This demand is valuable in various ways. In the first place, it diminishes pleasure while increasing desire. That's an interesting statement. I'm going to come back to that one maybe. The pleasure of novelty is by its very nature more subject subject than any other to the law of diminishing returns. Mm. And continued novelty costs money so that the desire for it spells avarice. Avarice? I don't avarice? Know that, ev- what does that word mean? I'm going to look it up here. I don't even know. Uh, 
extreme greed or wealth for material gain. And again, novelty, just while we're here, I'm in the dictionary, uh, the quality of being new, original, or unusual. Right. So it's think like about it in that frame. FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Or unhappiness or both. And again, the more rap- rapacious this desire, the sooner it must eat up all the innocent sources of pleasure and pass on to those the enemy forbids. Mm. Thus, by inflaming the horror of the same old thing, we have recently made the arts, for example, less dangerous to us than perhaps they have ever been, lowbrow and highbrow artists alike being now daily drawn into fresh and still fresh excesses of lasciviousness, unreason, cruelty, and pride. So in a sense, like, they're talking about how, like, uh, they can use art to for people to escape, and then like the the strict like um what's the wording I'm trying to get at like uh they can keep pushing the edge. Okay, so Is like that- I keep com- I I am coming to mind with think about like music artists, mm-hmm. okay. pop artists over the years, and you think about like the Beatles, how controversial I want to hold your hand was <laughs> that they would say or Elvis that. dancing with his or hips. Elvis dancing, his right? hips are moving. And right, then yeah, yeah. and then go forward a few years and you have like I don't know Cher or like right. you know like some of these and then you you hit Madonna era yeah and Madonna Point was like boobs. way over the top yeah, yeah. right but then once that's been done the novelty of it the newness of it is gone yeah. and you only spiral further right into into crazier and crazier you know your Lady Gaga and and now it's yeah, like she's so crazy now it's right. you know. <laughs> Like if you were to show Lady Gaga Wop. to someone, oh, we're talking who about like Lady we're Gaga getting there, right? Wop, right? Yeah. I mean, well, and think about like lyrically. So I was yeah. just talking about like how people express themselves, right, 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 right. And I mean, look for look for themes in society here right. of like, yeah. But now it's like the novelty. The novelty at one point just existed on a stage, and yeah. we would and we would watch that, and it would be enough to experience that novelty as a as a viewer, yeah, toward the stage, yeah. No. But now with like our cell phones and like the stage, we are on the stage. We yes. create the stage for ourselves. Right, we keep pushing it. And now it's like, we are keep pushing our, we, yep. we keep pushing ourselves into novelty on yeah. the stage. And well, I wonder crazy. how much word you further. Use here, finally, the desire for novelty is indispensable if we are to produce fashions or vogues. And so mm. like, that's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Is we just want to keep pushing it. And yeah. with that, people are going to become increasingly less and less satisfied and content with the everyday which is which is exactly what we're designed to be satisfied and contented exactly. in. And so when we sit and oh. TikTok just keeps suggesting the next video, uh-huh. I don't know if you've ever done that where you're like, ah, I'm going to lie. Like, I deleted Instagram off my phone. It's not that I don't like connecting with my friends and people like that, but it just becomes like I realize like, I'll, 25 minutes will go by and like, what the heck did I just do? Like, or there are times where like, I just, I there's just, I just need to escape. Yeah. You ever hear those words? I don't know if you've ever said that. And now it's something that's mm-hmm. my problem where it's like, I just need to veg out and escape. Like I just need to go instead of just sitting in like, you know what? This is exactly the tension, the pressure I need to feel right now. Learning to manage that or learning to look inward and go, maybe I don't need to be doing these things and asking these questions, right? Doing some of those hard works or just going outside and laying on the grass. Like it's okay to do that kind of stuff and enjoying, again, the season we're in or maybe not enjoying it, embracing maybe the pain of that season because sometimes it's a little painful. But yeah. All right. So here he's going to keep going, right? The use of fashions in thought is to distract the attention. Here we go. From men of their real dangers, right? Which is, okay, we direct the fashionable outcry of each generation against those vices of which it is least in danger and fix its approval on the virtue nearest to that vice, which we are trying to make endemic, which is exactly, it's a super fancy way of saying exactly what you said. It just gets worse and worse over time. They yeah. Get, well, and then they're cleverly, because you look at different generations have different f- focuses. Yeah. So the, a big focus of our generation right now is social justice. And I think that there's mm-hmm. a big need. So positive. There's a big a positive, right? Yeah. And I would say that's a positive yeah. thing. I think that's, that, that young people are more aware of mm-hmm. uh, the importance of inclusion, yeah. the importance of making sure that people feel like they belong, like they're valued. Truly like these are good, good, yeah. good things, yeah. but they have, they are being distorted or I'm right. watching things now be distorted in uh, like irony, right? You're looking at it and you're going, but the very thing you're fighting for, you're creating, it's alienating. You're, you're making it even <laughs> worse, yes, yes, right? Yes. But like, but it's, it's, so it's a, it's a virtue 
that sits very close to a vice of pridefulness. So mm. an arrogance and exclusivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so the virtue of in, of inclusion mm-hmm. has now created an exclusive group <laughs> through which you can only include people the way that. They're excluded. That they're including them. <laughs> and if they and if, agree and with if you, d- if they don't group. agree with you, you're yeah, excluded. Exactly. <laughs> and you're like, this is ironic. Yeah. That you would that we would be looking at people saying, okay, all people are valuable, except except you, <laughs> you because you don't see you don't you don't follow the same line of value. We're yeah. all trying to get to the same beach, but you're not taking the path that I took. Yeah. So you're excluded, and yeah. it's like. Okay. But we're all trying to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that's kind of where I'm looking. But that's a generational thing. Sure. And then, you know, previous generation may have been a focus on, uh, re, you know. Retirement. Um, or, <laughs> no, yeah, well, no, they're focused on it now. <laughs> but, like, you know, religious uh, growth. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah, faith, yeah. Growth, growth and faith in the world. Yeah, yeah. And so you look at, like, the early 90s, late 90s Christian movements where, you know, and probably before that too, um, of, like, the virtue being we want to disciple young people well into their faith so they're equipped with it. And the vice turned into manipulating young people oh, right, right, into right, right, right. That's kind of like last chapters, actually, following. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. so I think yeah. that there's there is like a very close uh tie yeah, yeah. to virtue and vice. And yeah. I think what I'm kind of seeing here is uh whatever whatever for each generation, you know, is focused on. Yeah. Let's leverage the opposite and try ah. and try and make that the uh, you know like ironically they think they're doing what they're supposed to be doing right. and now we're undermining that and yep. c- just creating a bigger monster and out it's of it pride or ego or other yep. things on the other side and it goes on the games to have them all running about with fire extinguishers whenever there's a flood <laughs> and all crowding to the side of the boat which is already nearly gunwale under. So the idea would be like, oh, there's a flood. Let's all grab the extinguishers and they run to that side of the boat and it just kind of sinks under. It's, it, well, oh, do you need an extinguisher if there's a flood? No, exactly. No, you need an extinguisher so if there's a fire. So they're grabbing the wrong thing. So their yeah. ideas are focused on... It, 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 that reminds the same me, idea, like the social justice. Yeah, no. And, when and that's now actually, it's like you're making it even worse now. Right, it's yeah. just boop, and then the whole thing is going to sink because of it. I remember I was wakeboarding mm-hmm. and Pam, we were we had like, it was a young adults thing back in the day we were doing that. Uh, Kyle, like a whole the bunch Delta? of... The, yeah, exactly, yeah. the Delta. And... Um, she had nice new pair of shorts on or whatever. She's got her wakeboard on and we had an older boat and she went to go like go in the water and her new shorts got caught on the, the, the cleat. And so she, her f- wakeboard went in, her face went in, but her oh, shorts no. were caught on the cleat on the edge of the boat. So like she's like kind of hanging, like kind of face is kind of in the water. You know what I'm saying? And like legs and she can't lift herself up because she's like caught, like yeah. caught, caught. And I was like, she's like, bah, bah, like help, like, you know, kind of like I'm stuck. We're like, oh no, pam it. Everybody, Everybody ran, ran the side over the side. The whole boat. <laughs> and put her underwater. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, get to the other side, guys. And I had to like pick her up and unhook her. But yeah. and that's the same. I've been literally picturing that scene where everybody runs and the whole boat almost went under because there was 10 people in the boat. And yep. like almost it was like right there. So all right, it's a funny story. I'm gonna keep reading here. So thus we make it fast fashionable to expose the dangers of enthusiasm, which is what you're saying, at mm-hmm. the very moment when they are all really becoming worldly and lukewarm. A century later, when we are really making them all b- Byronic and drunk with emotion, the fashionable outcry is directed against the dangers of the mere understanding. So they use the social, like, muse, like, m- problems in the world for people to try and solve them to kind of just keep basically bringing the rock in the boat back and forth, trying to get it sink. And people keep grabbing fire extinguishers, running to each side and just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Like just this constant rocking. Mm-hmm. So cruel ages are put on their guard against sentiment, sentimental, I don't know that word. Sentimental, sentimentality. There you go. Feckless and idle ones against respectability, lecherous ones against puritanism, and whether all men are really hastening to be slaves or tyrants, we make liberalism the prime boogie. Hence the last four years. Yeah. But the great triumph of all is to elevate this horror of the same old thing into a philosophy so that nonsense in the intellect may reinforce corruption in the will. Wow. I'm going to read that again. But the idea. greatest trump triumph of all is to elevate this horror of the same old thing into a philosophy so that nonsense 
in the intellect may reinforce corruption of the will. Meaning like, okay, it is here that the general evolutionary or historical character of modern European thought, partly our work, comes in so useful. So he's going to describe this here, right? The enemy being God loves platitudes. Of a proposed course of action, he wants men, so far as I can see, to ask very simple questions. Is it righteous? Is it prudent? Is it possible? Now, if we can keep men asking, is it in accordance with the great movement of our time? Is it progressive or reactionary? Is it the way that history is going? <laughs> on the wrong side of history. <laughs> they will neglect the relevant questions. Am I and on the right side of history? That's what we hear all the that's time. That's what we hear all the time. We hear that a lot, which is crazy. Even from the Christians. Like, that's the statement Like, wouldn't it be better to just ask the question, is it righteous? Is it righteous? Is, is this it, the right thing to do? Is this, is this gospel-driven? Is this being kingdom maker, kingdom breaker? Like, is this wise? <sighs> so it goes on, do, and the questions they ask do, I'm sorry, and the questions they do ask are, of course, unanswerable. For they don't know the future, and what the future will depends very largely on just those choices which they now invoke the future to help them make. Oh my! So basically, it's like if they were asking the right questions, the seeds of the truth that they live in today will produce the fruit of righteousness tomorrow. It's going to create the future. But instead, we for. want to try and control the future into what we think heaven's supposed to look like as Christians or anybody else, or anyone else, and yeah, begin in to try and live that way instead of just doing the simple practices of faith. Yep. Very interesting thought. Like. Yeah. Well, it's it it's it's easy to complicate something so simple. And that's what yeah. they say. We want to make it calm. And it's not simple. It's 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 hard. It's like the words of yeah. in the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe with the Lion, right? It's just mm -hmm. it's 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 well, I forgot what he said. It doesn't matter. I was going to quote <laughs> and I can't cuz I can't remember what he said, but that's okay. Something about I'm fierce or something, but I'm not mean or something. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. All right. So, let's keep reading here. Is that okay? Yeah, now I'm trying to think of that quote. Yeah, I know. Sorry. And the question they do ask are, of course, unanswerable. For they do not know the future, and that the future will be depends very largely on just those choices which they now invoke the future to help them make. As a result, while their minds are buzzing in this vacuum, we have the better chance to slip in and bend them on to the action we have decided on. So it leaves them open to, leaves us open if we kind of choose to try and look into the future. Remember that whole discussion we had about the future and the present and that whole thing? Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. So, um, and great work has already been done. So basically it's like sitting in this place of, of trying to figure out the future is way worse for us than just simply looking in obedience to what God is saying today. Yeah, and I think I'm I'm reading this from less of a Christian perspective and more of a practical. Well, just more of a like world in general okay. kind of kind yeah. of perspective. Yeah. Like the world in general, right, throughout history, like if you look at at people like um and we I I think we're experiencing a lot of it now uh where you're seeing we want society to be better. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So how do we do that? And we're not looking at the simple answers that say, okay, let's help people just be better people. Kind of like what Jordan Peterson talks about, taking personal ownership. Yeah, it's like personal ownership. And yeah. instead, we're looking for this future that we're trying to create. Through politics. That we else. don't know what the future is going to actually be. Right. And if we just did the simple things, it would, it would, it would, and, and let the, the future kind of sort itself out as we did the simple things that we need to do yeah. as a society, as a people, as a person, a, like that, whatever you're convicted toward or care about. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about from a faith perspective. Yeah. Whatever you are, whatever you care about or want to see better in the world. Yeah. Like if you were to just take the simple steps of, of doing those things now and letting the future work itself out, mm -hmm. you would be in better shape. Uh, then I think what they're trying to do is is get people to be so focused on creating that future that they compromise the now mm. and then ruin both. Yep, that's that's a good way to say it. I yeah. love that. They get so focused on the future, they compromise the now and ruin both. Yes. That's so good. And so, like, listen to this, right? He says this next line is, and great work has already been done. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Once they knew that some changes were for the better and others for the worse and others, again, indifferent, we have largely removed this knowledge. For the descriptive ag adjective unchanged, we have substituted the emotional adjective stagnant. Mm. 
We have trained them to think of the future as a promised land which favors heroes attain. Oh, that's literally the definition of today. That's crazy. Not as something which everyone reaches at the rate of 60 minutes an hour, whatever he does, whoever he is. That Mm -hmm. last statement is exactly what we're talking about, like taking just the personal ownership. Yep. Running to G- for us in the Christian terms for, is yeah, running to Jesus in the regular world sense is just take just, personal ownership and look to seek to live better every day. And I think again, it's like to root it back to the theme of this chapter: the horror of the same old thing. You know that, um, like just hor- kind of doing the work that is whatever work is in front of you to do the right thing in the work that's in front of you right now is enough. That's the same old thing, but it creates, it's an old rhythm. It creates rhythms, right? It's a, it's something that is unchanging, but it's also changing. It's something that's permanent, but it's also something that's changing, yeah. uh, these rhythms. And, uh, I think about, you know, I, I taught at camp and talked about the tree and, uh, but I also got to talk about my daughter, you know, and like right now my daughter's changing a lot. It's like, uh, new words, new, um, she's learning all kinds of new symbols, uh, like, uh, sign sign language. language. She's learning, uh, new songs and how to respond and, and dance to those songs. Right. So we've been doing head, shoulders, knees and toes for a while now. And, uh, eyes, ears, mouth, nose, like, like that chunk. And occasion, like you would get, you would start singing it and she would point to a body part. Like she, she knew that like she would either go for like her knees or her toes or her eye, but she didn't do it at the right time, right? You go head, shoulders, and her finger's already in her eye because she knows that it's coming. Like she knows that that's part <laughs> that's of it. That's cute. That's so cute. And now she's like starting to develop, like you start to sing the song and she go, she she hits her knees and then toes. Yes. Like she knows that, okay, there's two things here. Yeah. Or she'll, she'll go you know, ears and then go to her, her nose or her mouth. And so like, she's starting to put together and she's developing so quickly. And like that rate of development is how it's supposed to be yeah. for young children, right? Yeah. They develop super quick and like, there's all kinds of crazy development, but at some point we kind of, that development starts to plateau. It never yeah. stops, but it, it starts to slow down. It's less mm-hmm. recognizable. And I think a lot of us who are adults, like, like for kids, Change is, change is a, just a reality. Mm. Like your teeth are falling out. Your teeth are coming in. Your teeth are falling out. You're oh, getting yeah. bigger. You're buying yeah. new clothes. Like, like, like physically, there's so much change that's always happening. And then all of a sudden, now you're in school. Now you're in this grade. Now you're learning these things. And like, at some point, we kind of hit this adulthood where we go, okay, no more change. Like, yeah. like, let's resist change. Yeah. Let's let's st- like pump the brakes on change here, and uh, I, I I've done enough changing. I'd like to just be I'd like to just be stable now, mm, comfortable, comfortable, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But like embracing that change, mm. but like e- embracing also the expectations for that change, and mm, mm. Um, sometimes we have unrealistic expectations for our change, yeah, um, yeah. for our process of change, and. Um, you know, kind of the idea of a tree growing, and I, yeah. I've referenced this before, but yeah. um, you know, we don't we don't sit outside and say, okay, today I'm going to watch this tree grow. Yeah, you know, and there there it is, like a foot taller or yeah. whatever. Yeah. The tree's just doing its thing. Yeah, it is faithful to to do what it is supposed to be doing. Yeah. And in that process, you look back over time and you say, okay, this is a bigger tree than it was before. Yeah, yeah. And as people, if we were just faithful to do and respond and surrender the way that we are called to surrender in whatever context or yeah. whatever, right? Like I'm talking now from a Christian perspective, surrendering to to uh, to God and just like whatever direction you feel like he's calling you in. Um, if we were to just be faithful in those things... We would experience change in a way that doesn't seem tangible at, for, at, like, at all, maybe. And then that frustrates us and burns us out because we're like, well, wait, I, want, I thought you know, this would get better or whatever. But if we're just faithful to continue on, at some point we look back and we go, oh, wow. I am I am different than yeah. who I was. The promises of God do ring true. It may not be yeah. in our timing, but they do. So his promise yeah. of redemption and the, yeah. and the work that he wants to do. And the other thing like I, playing that long game. Totally. Yeah. And I, the other thing I take out of this too is that like, 
I think people want to feel significant, like they mm. matter. And so often like that drives us to make decisions to try and push society forward so we be- can become the person who's like, oh, yeah, I was part of that movement or I was part of that. We're finding our identity in those things. Instead of just finding our identity in the simplicity that we have to trust God with these seasons, that we get to rest in those seasons, yep. that ultimately it's all about Him and it's all about bringing glory to Him. And we can be okay with setting aside and thinking that we we have to put our ego aside in a sense and just surrender to it. And that's hard to do because we want to feel like we're a part of fixing society. We want to feel like we're a part of doing those things. Mm-hmm. And I think the best way to do that is by owning up and walking in obedience, being faithful to Him and seeing what He can do. Just imagine an entire society of people pursuing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and the fruit of their lives being that, but the root is just walking in repentance. That would create an amazing society, yeah. an amazing world around us. And instead, we're pursuing the other things, which is what is distracting us from the very thing, the seeds that God wants to put in our hearts. So yeah. I agree with that Like that statement as the sentiment of like, we see things broken in the world, we want to try and fix it. And God's, and what well, I'm reading this is saying the enemy wants us to go do that. And God's saying, no, trust the seasons I put in your life. Trust the, yep. the surrender, walking in obedience, being faithful to share with the one person or the six, or the developing the gifts and the talents that I've given you and grow in those things. And over the season, we look back and go, I was faithful, I was faithful, and ultimately because God is faithful to us. So that's it's really so, good. Dude. It's so it's contrasting really with, you know, that idea of High novelty. society and fast and novelty. And the novelty, you know, Instagram even and, within yeah. the Christian yeah, realm totally. of novelty, yeah, you know, man. it's like, well, how do we create the next new thing? Yep. How do I do, how yep. do I experience the next yep. new thing in yep. my faith? How can I earn it? And if basically. I'm not experiencing something new in my faith, then yep. did I really even have exactly. faith? No, and we start so to good. question that, and it's yep. like, it, 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 really pulls the power of yeah. the simplicity of just doing yeah. and being and allowing yeah. that to be enough. There's a book that I love you by know. Eugene Peterson, the guy who wrote The Message. Uh-huh. And he wrote a book called The Long Obedience in the Same Direction. And in mm. some ways, this is what yep. I think. is It's just like it's the ongoing day-to-day, every day. Just take one step of faith every day and see what happens. And that's what I encourage you guys to do. If you have any questions or thoughts or comments on anything we've been talking about, reach out to us, comment on any one of the sites. It all feeds to me. Um, and we'll go back and forth. And, uh, dude, thanks for your time. I enjoyed our time yeah, together. Yeah, it's so good. And let's just be faithful so in the day-to-day, man. Run into Jesus. And if you have more questions about faith and this journey of faith and um, you disagree with us, just let us know. Reach out. and We'd love to have more of a conversation with you. So yeah. may God's grace and peace be with you. And we'll see you guys next time.